And once again, joined by Leitrim manager Andy Moran to have a little bit of a recap on a rather eventful couple of months since we had you on the podcast last time, Andy. Um, it's been a while since it started last year. First of all, you're very welcome to the show, as always. Pleasure to have you. Great, great to be back. Thanks, Bradley. Um, It's been a fairly eventful couple of months since we had you uh, for a conversation before. It's You've been to New York and back. It didn't go to plan, I suppose. Uh, the Talented Cup has come and gone. Um, what's, I suppose, let, let me start by asking you really, I suppose, how have you been over the last few months? What's your thoughts on on the end of the league campaign and, and the championship uh, run? Yeah, I, I think since we, we, we talked to you in the tunnel in Park, Sean, um, from the last league game against Sligo, where we were going into injury time, point up, and we're heading for Division 3 in Scrooge Park the week after. It's been, like, needless to say, a hugely frustrating time for, for me, more importantly, the players, uh, the management team, and and the Leitrim supporters and uh Joe, we go over to New York. We a game that we're expected to win, and we we we, we have high expectations of ourselves. Joe, we shoot for what seven or eight, twenty eight, and we score fifteen points, and we come out on the wrong side of it. And that's the nature of sport. And it's uh yeah, and like you like you do after that, you got you got to dust yourself down, and you you got to take the criticism, and you you, you got to kind of push the shoulders back and go again. So that's what we've been doing since. Since the Wexford game, then since the Talent Cup, it's been a huge kind of air of reflection. Uh, try to get the reviews done with the county board, with the medical team, and the players, and uh, and then you kind of just have to take a breath and uh, and kind of, I suppose, reflect and then make decisions of where you're going to go. Then after that, I know you've probably talked this to death over the last few weeks with media, with players, with the county board, as you mentioned, and with sponsors and other. Uh, stakeholders in the game here in the county but um let's maybe take a look at some of each of those four games and i suppose it was a pattern in terms of the play in those games of early goal chances not converted maybe a little bit of nerves a little bit of self-doubt creeping in in certain quarters and it just seemed to end up games that we possibly should have won based on maybe the early dominance we just didn't quite close them out and ended up on the on the losing side yeah, I suppose as a management team, there's circumstances within each one of those games. You'd love if you could turn back time uh, and and change it. Um, but if we go back to that Sligo game, and like a whole lot of our, uh, I, I suppose my job is to to have us ca- like contesting the last two rounds of the National League and to have us in position to to go and get promotion. And Tom Pryor had put us in that position, and uh, we didn't see it out. And realistically did we ever really recover from that Sligo defeat and the 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 answer to that is possibly not like we went to New York I'd be kind of very happy with the way we actually played in New York and that's not try to I suppose pacify people or patronize people or anything like that that's reality is we we went in we we created the goal chance we thought we'd create we uh created the point chance we thought we'd create and just on the day we just didn't take them and uh and that that's it and we, we we got caught we got bet on a penalty shootout we nearly got caught in 2018 we got caught this time and um like that is hugely 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 frustrating and really really annoying for players and management but listen it is what it is now we cannot change back time and the talented cup briefly i'll be absolutely perfectly honest with you we would have played a really good antrim team and we're now in the semi-final the the talent cup and crews there really didn't really haven't really got challenged since the group stages um and we did really, really well until Keith realistically got injured within that game, and uh, we were level. Uh, and then in a nine-minute spell, they scored. They they got that gap of eight or nine points, and we fought well at the end. For Mana, we came out after half time, put in a really good blast of performance, and um, got back to level again. And probably that's where I would suggest the injuries really kicked in, where you'd love to be bringing, like in that Sligo game, that Leash game with a Jack Hessel and a Tom Pryor. These really kind of explosive fellas, Evan Sweeney in New York, coming on off the bench, making that difference. And then we didn't have them. So that's when we decided to introduce all the younger players. So the Talented Cup for me was actually OK, considering the people who were missing. Uh, but the new the Sligo New York games are really the games that you'd be frustrated and disappointed about. Yeah, there's obviously a lot of talk um, around the county. I'm sure you're aware of this about your own future in the, in the position. Um, can you give us any insight into what the plan is for next year? Are you? Uh, do you have a contract? Are you prepared to, fit, to honor it? Are the county board happy to have you? Has having those discussions taken place yet? Yeah, I suppose over the last couple of weeks, we we, we met with the medical team. You do a review, and we met with the county board. Um, 
Martin and Enda and these guys and uh, had that review and um, we met with the players actually on Monday evening and uh, yeah, listen, it's 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 not in my in, in my nature to be stepping away from Anthem to be honest to be quitting Anthem. Um, I think we came in on our very first podcast. I'd say we said Rome wasn't built in a day. This is going to take time, and along that time, there's going to be disappointments. Like I was very fortunate in our career chasing this all Ireland dream didn't get to us but at great times along the way but those bumps along that road it wasn't just Joe you go and you 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 get fit and all of a sudden you're contending for these competitions it takes uh, uh, multiple years I played from 2003 to 2011 until that really good team came and then we kind of pushed it on so in this it takes time for me yes we lost to New York but the thing I would look at is Sligo went on to draw a Kildare in a group stage of a of a senior inter county uh, top level competition, and we were within a, a minute or two minutes of beating Sligo and getting to Division Three. So, do I think we're way off? Absolutely not. Uh, do I think we've made huge progress along the way? Yes. Have we made huge mistakes along the way? Absolutely, absolutely. No one is trying to deny that. But the progress this team has made throughout the course of the last. Uh, I think 14, 15, 16 months, in my opinion, has been huge. And the evidence is there. You see the young fellas coming off. You see Oshin coming off the, uh, uh, like Oshin McLaughlin. He's tried for three or four years to get going. Now, all of a sudden, he's a mainstay on the team. You see Keith Byrne becoming top scorer in Division 4, two years in a row, top scorer overall in one of those years, Talta Cup All-Star. Paul Keeney, Talta Cup All-Star. These things are tangible to a group of lads that are really trying to push on and do stuff for their county. And they're putting the work in. And, it's a matter of sticking with it. And like the easy thing to do for everyone here after New York is to quit and walk away and start again. But these guys, our team, our Leitrim team, stuck together after New York. No one walked. No one, no one walked away from it, stayed with it, fought to the bitter end, even though we had catastrophic injuries, fought to the bitter end. And yes, we came up second against Fermanagh, Antrim and Wexford, but it wasn't without trying. Yeah, in terms of the squad, you talked about the kind of players unavailable through injury. Um, obviously, Keith, I think anyone who watched any of the games would have seen that he was not at his usual standard. Um, and we suffered because of that. And he wasn't the only one. There's others, obviously, as well. But um, talk to me about some people who weren't there and what the the view is towards them coming back into the fold in the in the medium to, to long term and looking towards maybe the FBD and the National League at the start of next year and through the club championship this year. I'm thinking the likes of Donald Casey didn't play much football this year. Uh, Ryan O'Rourke didn't play much football um, for the county, but yeah, he's been involved with the club scene as well. An impressive, I think, 13 or 14 points he got in his first game just back. Rub, just, just to rub it in, yeah, just to rub it in, yeah. Um, no, it's a great question. And, and Keith, I, I will go first with Keith because Keith got injured halfway through the league and got injured against Antrim uh, in the first round. Hurt his knee, two separate injuries. And, always put his body on the line like i like the the amount of respect as a footballer i got for him over the last three to four months not when he was kicking 10 12 15 points but over the last couple of months where he really stuck at it even through injury got himself right got himself on the field and was willing to put the lead from jersey on i i think that's the biggest compliment that i can pay to him it, it was just he was willing even though he knows once you cross that white line you're being judged as a fit player he he, he was willing to put his shoulders to the wheel and never kind of let the side down and it was so impressive on his behalf. On the other guys, it's it's a question to try to get them back for for the uh, for the club season. So we we had Ryan and Donald both at the the player review on on, on Monday evening, and John Ryan was with us right up to John was, was with the team right up to the Fermanagh game. But then I, I think at that stage it was it was fairly clear he wasn't going to make it back for any of the Talent Cup games. So like I think people were shocked to see him playing club football. But club football is a huge step down. From going in and playing inter county football and true talks between the physios ryan myself that was the decision that was made and that that's fine we should be happy as Leitrim people to see ryan o'rourke back on the field our trick now is try to keep him back on the field which we haven't seen over the last couple of years to keep him fit as much as we can like he had a really good season last year i think he was the sixth top scorer overall league and championship on all of our and i think i've seen that on your stats at the end of the year he was sixth overall which was amazing considering he missed a bit of football. Uh, but our trick now, our aim is to get Ryan 
to get a full club season and get him to play then into into January and February for Leitrim. Uh, Donal, very similar. Um, I think the problem with Donal really was he got a really significant hamstring hamstring tear. But it was the first time then again that himself and Paul played college football in UL and that correlation we probably didn't manage that right with, with I was going to ask you about I was going to ask you about that because I think um even on the day he got injured I think it was against was it Antrim in the first day of the league or the second game in the league it was an, it was yeah, a hand, first day, yeah. yeah it was a handful of days before I believe the semi-final of the of the Sigerson Cup I nearly said the Collingwood I'm giving my, I'm giving my college loyalties out there yeah. uh, but the Sigerson Cup semi-final was I think three days later in in hindsight was the right decision to play himself and Paul that close to what ultimately might be a, a, one of the biggest games he possibly ever would have played in? It was a really good question, and it's a question we we actually myself and Donald talked about on Monday evening. Um, the aim was to take Donald off after forty minutes, but as you can remember, that Aiden oh, Flynn, minutes. yeah, Aiden, Aiden Flynn uh, dislocated his elbow on that same day, and it just delayed it. Tom Quinn was ready to come on. And it just it delayed, and the very last play he was supposed to come off for, he, he pulled his hamstring. That like we, I had a great um, relationship actually with Declan in UL, and we were talking all the time about minutes, warm ups, football, and it just that one was just unlucky. Like he, he, absolutely, we we can take some stock in that injury. There's no no doubt about it. But very 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 unlucky. And Paul Paul only came on for seven or eight minutes. Again, that was the plan that Donald would start the game and Paul would finish the game. Listen, it didn't work out, and uh, yeah, it's just it's something. And like I, I suppose, Donald and Ryan are two really, really strong players for Leitrim. We, I think, we need to have a a way of how we're going to manage them over the the next six months to get them there. Because over the last four years, they haven't played enough football for Leitrim. And our aim as management, my aim coming in here as manager of Leitrim, was to give the Leitrim players the opportunities that I got as a player. And um, at that at that point, we haven't got it. You know. Speaking about the opportunities you got as a player, Sigerson obviously was a big part of your early career, at least, and you've been a big advocate of that both on and off this show. Um, do we have any of our younger lads, maybe last year's county minors, some of our under-20s, that you know are going into that level this year, and, and have they been helped or pushed into programmes in, in different colleges? Yeah, well, Barry is a full scholarship student in UCD, Barry McNulty, um, a, a really, really strong player. Ocean obviously played for Sligo IT last year. Um, but not many more played. And like when we came in first, it was very, very, it was a very, very unusual situation where we had Barry McGuini, who was the last Sigerson All-Star from Leitrim. And Paul Keeney wins the next one in 2023. So it was a big gap, but there was nobody playing Sigerson ball. So we tried to encourage it. Um, but you do have to manage the load of players and particularly players who are a tiny bit more injury prone. You need to probably manage them a bit more. And like, we might have got that wrong. We might not have, but there is a suggestion there that we might, like Donald, you know, minutes, all that sort of stuff. We might have changed differently. If I had my time again, I probably would. But th these things happen. I, I did it where you played every second game, but some players like the likes of Paul Keeney never gets injured. You know, so maybe you just need to. We, we need to change our kind of approach to it next year. But within the college football, we want all our lads that are going to college. We want them all playing football. Like like college football, like if the boys had played the year before with UL, Paul Keeney and Donald Casey, I think they'd have won the Sigerson, but then they'd have also got the opportunity to play with David Clifford, which these opportunities don't come around too often. And to see him train and to see his application, his, all that sort of stuff, I think would have been a huge education for them lads to see. Yeah, I think Alan Flynn will be praying that you haven't given the commentators Chris to Paul Keeney, obviously saying he doesn't get injured. Yeah, and yeah. Going back to some of the selections through the, the last set of games and probably the, the season as a whole, goalkeeper has been an interesting position this year from Leitrim's point of view. We started off with Darren and goals, uh, solid performance, a couple of clean sheets and a couple of wins early on, and then um, made the decision to go with Nevin, who wouldn't be a recognised goalkeeper, but to be fair to him, uh, pulled off some amazing saves in, in games that kept us in. I know New York, he made some vital saves, and I think against Sligo as well, or Leash as well, he pulled off a couple of saves that kept us in the games at pivotal times um i know killian gaffey was flown around as a name in the squad as well where are we with goalkeeper plan going forward and and are we going to stick with nevin or are we looking at maybe the likes of killian coming in and challenging for that position yeah i suppose just to give an update quickly just on the other players that got that were injured the likes of evan sweeney had a wrist break uh jordy uh, just as a knee issue should be back for the club season adam reynolds 
hamstring should be back for the club season is back in uh, he should be back actually in the next week or two Connor uh, Connor Dwyer just had a similar injury to, to Ryan so we'll just try to get that right and manage it and obviously KB with his knee so hopefully they'll be all back ready and flying for the club season the goalkeeper one was always an interesting one yeah um Joe, I, I suppose Nevin went in last year when Maxi got injured. He went in as a uh, sub keeper to Benny, and uh, he actually showed to be really, really good at communicating, helping, talking with goals. His kicker was really good. He was good to give the ball back to a really strong one with the high ball. Obviously, there's certain characteristics that Darren is 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 better than Nevin, and there's certain characteristics that Nevin are better than than than, than Maxi. But listen, they, they, we we made that call and. Listen, we were very happy with it, if I'm being honest, because I think never done really, really well. He saved a couple of penalties in New York. Don't think he had a shot to save in New York, but made some like from play during the course of the game and extra time. Don't think he had a shot to save, but did really well on the penalties. Kickouts were excellent. And I think carried himself kind of really well throughout that leash, Sligo, New York, and, and the Talton Cup games. Killian then is, um, yeah, Killian played for Sligo Rovers for people that don't know Killian Gaffey, and hopefully you get to know him during the summer. Uh, an extraordinary talent, um, really good guy, uh, had a really bad, severe uh, knee injury, leaving Sligo Rovers, and uh, where he's come from, from last summer when we met him first to where he's come to now is, is an absolute extraordinary change in a young fella, and um, hopefully he just needs to keep going that goal pattern, if he does, he's an extraordinary keeper with an extraordinary talent, and uh, uh, hopefully we can utilise him in, in 2024. No more yourself. You might have worn the Longford Town jersey at some point as well. I know you. Yeah, yeah. And he's just he's he's got everything you need as a keeper, and we just hope we see that uh, during the course of the year. But uh, a lot of that is down to Killian, and if if Killian uh, really wants it and chase it down, uh, I think he has a really big future to play. I know we touched on it briefly, but um, is Andy Moore in situ for the next twelve months? Are you around for the twenty twenty four campaign? Is that a, a done deal? Yeah, well, that's the that's the way that's the way I'm planning anyway. Um, yeah, like to be honest with you, like we, we came in, um, I just see this as a work in progress. I, I don't see this as I, I don't see the start and the end point to where you want to go. I, I, I like the biggest thing we need to do is to have player retention within our county and then go with that team for three to four years. That's what we need to do, and that's the only way we're going to get strong. You talked to Colin Collins, uh, when I used to do the, the podcast on, um, off the ball with with the boys, the football pod, we call him Collins on. That is the that is the stitch. It, like that is what you're looking for. You're looking for committed guys who you can put strength and conditioning on, you can put fitness on, and you can build a structure around them. And um, over the course of our time uh, with Leitrim from year one to year two, we didn't have that. But I'm fairly confident from year two to year three, we'll have a, a very good set structured squad going forward. Speaking to the lads the, on the meeting on Monday night, uh, percentage-wise, how many of them do you expect to be available to, if selected, of course, uh, to you know, over the next twelve months? Yeah, well, no one has made it. Uh, no one has made um, me aware that the, the, they're going traveling. Obviously, there's one or two of them uh, maybe approaching the end of the career, which is fine as well. And uh, I don't think we need to put names in them because we don't need to put pressure on them. But I think any lead from supporter knows who I'm talking about, really. Um, and but the rest of them seem good. We've we, we've had a uh, obviously Reardon stepped away during the year, and we'd expect to have Reardon back in 2024. Um, that's Reardon O'Rourke. Sorry for everyone. Um, I just mentioned them by first names, but Reardon, yeah, I expect to have him back in 2024. So listen, it's all positive. We we, we brought Stephen McLaughlin in from um, Kiltober during the year, and like was was absolutely brilliant for us around the place in terms of being from Leitrim, wanting to play, wanted to drive it on excellent character and person uh, and huge influence around the place you've got paul Morn, uh obviously barry michael mckern and radic all coming in from the 20s jack casey and making a huge impression around the place so what we're trying to do is get these guys who are going to commit for two or three years and really go after it for two or three years that's what we're looking to do without putting you on the spot andy you've come from a, a, a senior all ireland championship challenging team over an extended period of time where that buy-in is there from players in your opinion two years into the job does the average Leitrim footballer understand the commitment that's required to be at that level or to aspire to that level and I'm not trying to cast no, no. on the lads but but like we hear stories anecdotally of lads opting out because they're 
aggrieved that they weren't picked in a particular game or we hear that this is all anecdotal and it's all pub talk and yeah. but, that, but that's what people are saying around the county so i might as well ask you about it uh, others um opting out for social engagements whether it's a, a soccer match in another country or whether it's a, a relative stag party uh, and opting out of big games or training sessions or preparation for big games because of stuff that wouldn't be accepted in the environment you came out of as a player I would say over the past, no would be the answer to that, but I wouldn't put this team into that bracket because for me, what I see every night of training and what I see from the vast majority of the group and the group that we'd be going forward with, that these guys absolutely are doing everything in their power to get where they need to go. Of course, you're going to have it's not Mayo, it's not Kerry, it's not Dublin. So what I mean by that is when you play for them counties, there is incentives there to play for them counties and to do stuff. So in Leitrim and smaller counties, them incentives aren't there. It's the love of the county. You're playing for their team and away you go. But this group of lads are absolutely committed to it. Um, like we, we brought a group of lads together on Monday night that represented the whole group through one person that represented the Dublin group, one person that represented the under 20s, injured fellas, all these guys to the player review. And if you see what them guys did over three and a half hours on Monday night to try to make themselves better, to try to review the season, what we need to do to improve, like they're so close. But that, Brefney, the point I'm trying to make to everyone is that takes time. It doesn't happen in 14 or 15 months. It takes time. And people need to have patience with these young guys. They're going to make mistakes. Of course, nobody wanted to go out to New York and be the first team beaten out there. But say la vie, it's happened. It's, we, we have to move on and get stronger. And where I got huge encouragement from, huge encouragement from, was the gap between New York and the Talon Cup and the boys. We, we arrived back on, the, on the, the Monday evening or the Tuesday morning. And on Friday evening, all them boys were in the gym, ready to go, getting ready to go to training at 10 to 7 that night for training at 7 o'clock. And it was just, they just took it on. We knew we were under pressure all throughout the Talton Cup with the injuries we had, the quality of the opposition we were playing against. But the, the, the boys never gave up. They stuck at it. And that's going to be huge learning bringing into 2024. That's probably the fairest answer to that question I could ask, but I could, I could have got. But I just looking from the outside in um, over the last few weeks, um, I, I think all that is evident. And, and the standard in, in Gaelic football. Some people might argue with the, the style of play of certain teams, but the standard of fitness levels and stuff, it's going exponentially across the board. So if we make a little advancement, then everyone else makes the same little advancement yeah. and we're in the same position. So you nearly need to like bullet past people for it to even be noticeable that you've improved. Um, how can we do that in the next? And I hear what you're saying about the, the, the short term planning, like worrying about next Sunday. It's never going to get you so there in the long run. You might win a game, but then you'll get injuries or you'll get players burned out and you end up losing the war, uh, even though you might have won the battle. Where do you go from, from here or how can we do it? Or is it even outside your remit? Is it is it the, the youngsters coming through, the underage ranks? Where, where do Leitrim need to put their emphasis over the next five to ten years in the same way as Sligo and Roscommon have done to get the results they've got and to get where they are? But for me, do? for me, Sligo is a really good evidence. It's there's no there's no golden bullet. It's just literally consistency across the board. So Carol Foley wrote, um, I'm right, Carol Foley, minor manager. Yeah, Carol Foley. Wrote, there was an article with Carol after they got knocked out of the minor cha minor championship, and he was just going. And if you read that article, you could literally block out minors and block out Carol Foley and put in Andy Moore and delete from seniors. It was nearly the same article. So we're just trying to change little things along the way. It's literally little things along the way. And then things will happen, but people need to be patient with it. It's like, for me, like I absolutely adore the people elite from the supporters. Geez, the 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 sponsors, the supporters, what they've done for this team over the last twelve to fourteen months has been extraordinary. But most of them people that come to the games can see the little shoots of progress, can see the little bits. The, okay, now we're scoring more, but they can also see we're getting fitter. But every other team along with us is getting fitter along the way as well. So Sligo didn't just stand still to wait for Leitrim. We haven't bet Sligo since, what, 2011, 2012? And, like, look how close we're getting to them. 
and they're getting to under 20 finals and stuff like that so there's been an awful lot of good work done and sometimes when a result comes like new york people then forget about everything else that's gone before and everything then that comes after it. so for me people just need to continue along the track of little small gains of progress all along the way doctor did a great job last year with the minors Carl did a great job this year with the minors even though the results weren't there we were really competitive in an awful lot of them games okay we've got four really really or five really good under 20s out of an under 20 crop this year we need to do the same with young honeyman and these guys and young ben gucky and next year bring them along as well so it just needs to be small little changes and the key thing is then when we have good players that we hold on to as many of them as we can and add in them little bits of little pockets of good players then along the way as well uh, yeah, fair enough um that's i, I love i love what i'm hearing and i i fully agree with with that slowly slowly building a, a a squad of quality and keeping them retained what would you say to um i suppose the people out in the county who you mentioned sponsors and supporters and obviously the finances come into this as well um and without going into who's getting what the costs have gone up in the oh. last two years so um, what would you say to somebody who comes in and says that the money that the, the extra money that's been spent on preparation of teams, um, it's not it's not worth it. That whole argument of we've spent extra money, we're not seeing extra results. Given what you've just said, where where do you go with that point of view? Well, like the way I look, like okay, so I look at everything kind of from a business perspective. So last last Thursday we were we were eight years in business, right? So Congratulations. yeah, and like it was a great. Day. But those tough bloody days, like year one, year two, year three, weren't decorative, making money, happy. You know, thing. now all of a sudden we've eight years in business with twenty four staff, and we feel like we're growing. COVID hits it halfway between that, and you nearly needed to start again. And to me, yes, people, I think they're really fair comments. I think they're really fair comments in terms of too much money being spent, boom, 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 boom. Would I agree with them? No, but there's an argument. I respect that argument and you have to look into it and then you need to strike a balance. We are Leitrim. We're not going to be like, I think it was one of the top counties spending 2 million on the herders and footballers in 2022. We're not going to get to that level, but how can we make the best of what we have and away we go? And like, how can we create more money? So what I'm saying by that is, how do we get to the point where it's the 50 mile challenge is absolutely brilliant. Mike Feeney and these guys doing extraordinary work, Leitrim County Council, all these guys doing really good work. But how do we get the diaspora to help us out along that way so that if we do need to spend, that we have we have growth patterns along the way as well? Well, like the two million you talked about, the, if you take that per head population and per per head of employment and per head of the businesses in the in the county, I know I know which county you're talking about because it was well reported last year. They're not a million miles away. Um, we're probably spending more per supporter or per club than those other counties. So, like, how does a county like Leitrim justify that? Well, either like you have to kind of justify it, or else you just get pushed. To the side and i would say if you went cabin if you went to sligo if you went to leitrim if you went to roscommon if you went to all them per capita per pro pro rata i would say if you compared us to them counties i wouldn't say you'd say we're spending as much oh, do you know what i'm oh, saying yeah. it, like yeah. an awful lot of our uh, expenditures on player mileage it's it we, we've location where we've if we've 30 players my uh, in, in in the panel we've 15 in dublin 15 here so an awful lot of that is mileage and the and mayo would be the exact same if you have players in Dublin, they need to come. All of a sudden, they, the county board need to generate. So an awful lot of that is your unfortunate location and the amount of the amount of employment that's in. So that county, yes, but I'll tell you that county we're talking about there was an awful lot of Mayo people in that county as well. You know, in, yeah, they'd sport an awful lot of Mayo as well. Do you know? Yeah. In terms of the, that's true actually. Uh, in terms of the uh, the club championship, obviously that's the the next focus. There's a couple of rounds of the league to be played. We're back up in action this weekend. Uh, when you get to games, I know you're, you're a regular face around the county, all over the county, at all levels, uh, to watch games. What's the plan for the next few weeks and into the championship? Yeah, well, listen, the plan for me is th there's obviously a certain number of players that we, we will be keeping an eye on. Um, th those guys that played in the 20s that we didn't really, really know about, uh, that played for, for Benny this year, young Cunningham there, 
you know, there's there certain lads that we will be trying to get around to look at. There's obviously certain fellas that the likes of Ben Guckin, who's everyone can see the talent that Ben has. So, like, is my time really well spent going watching Ben? Joe, you know, or is it going watching try to get these little nuggets down in Manor Hamilton? Joe, you know, I remember the first day we seen Barry McNulty playing last year, and we actually didn't know who he was for 20 minutes, and then we, we kind of realized, oh, geez, that's young McNulty who played minor last year for Manor. Do you know, so like. You have to go around and try to find the numbers, but the key thing that we're, we we need to do over the next, I, I suppose, six months is get on the training field with the boys. And it's not going around doing group training sessions or anything like that. It's meeting them individually. Again, against Wexford, we had 17 shots from playing the first half and we converted five of them. So yeah. our shot conversion needs to get better. Our skill set needs to get better. Our training practice needs to get better. Uh, they have, they've improved, but we need to get them to a different level. So an awful lot of our time this year I would say would be sent, spent on the training fields of FINA, um, Manor Hamilton, Gortletra, all these, all these, all, all these little clubs going around and just working with players. Manor Hamilton won't thank you for calling a little club. Uh, in, yeah, terms, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in terms of the, I can, I can see the letter, I can see the letter of complaint coming yeah. in on, on that. Clancy, Clancy made the comeback a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I saw that. In terms of the, um, he didn't play round two though. That's all I would say. On that <laughs> he's still stiff. He told me he's still, he's still stiff. In terms of the um, the next six months, what success look like? Uh, what are you aiming to get? Is it about getting eighty percent of the squad back, ninety percent of the squad back? Is it about unearthing two or three gems that haven't had much game time at senior level for the county, bringing them in and having them fit and ready to rock in January, February when the national league gets back up and running, like? What is your main target for the next six months when, even though you're out of sight, out of mind of most of the, the Leitrim fans as they turn their attention to the club scene, um, what are you aiming to achieve in the next six months in the job? You, you, you um, I think you asked me a question there a few minutes ago. You asked me a question, do we know what it takes in terms of, in terms of, in terms of higher level performance? Do we know what it takes? And what the players do in the next six months is absolutely Going to be the key to drive forward in terms of what you have to come back into into preseason. Now we've got a run of seven league games in nine weeks. It never happened before. We had it last year. We're going to have it again next January. What sort of shape they ride back in when we're allowed back training on November twenty fourth? Um, John, what what sort of application do they put towards their weights, their skill set, their shooting, all that sort of stuff? That's what that to me. That's going to be that's going to be success. If you see the. The, like you're on about positives from this year. Aidan Flynn coming back being extraordinary. Nevin in goal, obviously. The way Killian McGlone played his last two games in the FP or in the Talent Cup. Uh, Adam Reynolds debut. Barry McNulty uh, debut. Jack Hesklin, the player he is now compared to the player he was 16 months ago. That was all done last winter when you seen him playing for Gord Letter all of a sudden. And all of a sudden, Jack Hesklin was jumping out in midfield, catching ball, running in, scoring goals. I think he even played a junior B game, the madman. Do you know? And then you had Oshin McLaughlin. But his body, the, the Breffney, and I, I'm joking about it, but his body wouldn't have been able for that before. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And now he's playing extra games. Do you know, the way Oshin McLaughlin came back into us this year to become a really good asset for us, moving into the t- tail end of 2023 and now into 2024. And the standout one is Darren Rooney. So Darren Rooney goes away, has a club season for Jews that he was very, very proud of. Uh, but came back in an extraordinary shape. And in his last four games for, for Leitrim, he scored one eleven from play. Do you know? And that's success. And I think boys can kind of see that what Keith has given the lads in winning that Talenton Cup All-Star, what Paul Keeney has given the lads in winning that Cigarettes Cup All-Star, they can see success within success. And people say, oh, you shouldn't be chasing individual awards. Well, if a lot of our guys get individual awards, that means we've won something. So... Yeah. That, that and that and that's and that's the way it's going. You see the shape of the Carrick boys now playing club football. Do you know, they're they're the work they've done during the winter, even in the league games that we've seen already, has been extraordinary. Do you know, and like how good are they going to become championship? Do you know what you mentioned, Killian Gaffey? What what Killian is Killian Gaffey going to go in and nail the number one jersey for Carrick in 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 2023? If he does that, then he's a huge chance to play for Leitrim in 2024. So that's success for me. And of course, we're looking for one or two. We decided in, in the Talton Cup, we decided we could go with really experienced players coming off the bench, or we could go with Raddick, Paul Moore, and Michael McKernan. And we went with them guys because we want them to be there in 2024. And them guys will go away. Paul had a really, really good under-20 campaign. I know they only played one game, 
which all during the Philly McGuinness was excellent at full forward. Um, Radic was brilliant against Galway in the under 20. Joe Michael was very, very unfortunate, but we, we have to remember what he did with the under 20s last year against Mio. Best player on the field, obviously. Barry was brilliant, and Jack had a really good game. So we decided to give them for his chances because we feel we can grow with them over the next 24, 36 months. Uh, just as you mentioned a couple of names there, a few more flashed into my mind in terms of other codes and, and whether discussions have been had with the likes of Jack Kilheaney, who would have been a key player for Leitrim under Terry Highland. Uh, he's playing rugby, living in Dublin. Uh, has the conversation been had with him, or has he kind of been... I suppose just... no, I, I, the door's always open for Jack. We had a great conversation with him last year. We were very close, I thought, to, to, to pushing him through the door. But just last minute, the commitment was probably too much with the two codes. Um, but th that conversation will definitely be had again. And if, if Jack comes to me and says, Andy, I'm interested in this uh, thing, we, we had the same conversation with Adam Reynolds. Um, and Adam Reynolds decided to come with us, which was, uh, which was brilliant. And... To be honest, up to when Adam got injured, he had a really, really strong, progressive year. And he was a huge loss to us when he ended up getting injured, you know. So th that's another conversation we need to have. Or like that, 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 another conversation we have to have with Jack. Obviously, Adam has come into us. But then there's other players. Um, Joe, you know, the likes of Bruner. Uh, David Brune will be looking, Joe, you know, to have a conversation with him. We've already had the conversation with Reardon. Uh, but then the, 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 the big thing for us is to get Donald, to get Jordan, to get Connor Dwyer, to get Ryan, Ryan O'Rourke back on the field, which would make us a really strong. Uh, the Breffney, actually, the real, the real good thing about fellas getting injured, and there's not really many positives about it, but the real good thing is that other fellas get huge experience. Other fellas get huge experience, and with Ryan not there, with um, uh, uh, the likes of Donald Casey not there, we've got fellas in now. Where we've got McGlone playing at cornerback, we've got Adam Reynolds playing at cornerback, we've got Aidan Flynn back playing, we've got Tom Pryor who's got huge minutes, Ushi McLaughlin has got huge minutes. So if we can get these guys back, then all of a sudden we've got a strength of a squad that we can we, we can move on, you know. You'll have to do something with the weather to get David Brun back from, from down under, but maybe you never know what you can organise. Uh, uh, this... yeah, yeah, we might, we might, we might uh, if he comes home and plays for Leitrim Games, we might cut up his passport or something. <laughs> Aiden, Aiden Flynn is on the case already, I think. Uh, well, he's been warned now. Uh, listen, Andy, we probably kept you for about twice as long as we expected to be chatting to you, but thanks very much for a very honest and, and, and thorough chat with us about all things uh, county football at the moment. Uh, before I let you go though, uh, neck on the block for the county championship, who are the teams to watch and who do you think is going to be lifting the, the FINA Cup at the end of the season? Yeah, well I think FINA are putting huge emphasis on it, like, uh, like I'm only beginning to know their history. Um, I'm only it's like, like it's 90 of one, one years I think this year. Oh, it's amazing and it's um, like I know a lot of the boys, their dads played on it and I, I know it's a huge like he, he, even with Ryan, I, I know it's a huge thing for him and Reardon and uh, Dipper and these guys that they, they want to go and, uh, and do something. Um, obviously, they're putting a lot of stock into it, but the favourites have to be Carrick. Um, John, the, the, the players they're even pushing through, young Lenahan now all of a sudden is, is has become a huge player. Ben is obviously going to add to them. Jack has had a couple of months of county football. Do you know, like they're just, Adam has got, had a full year of county football. They're Diffley is such a key player. If Killian gets right now, they're not lacking in the goalkeeping position anyway. But if Killian gets right, it'll probably add to them a tiny bit. It's, if Killian gets into number one, it'll probably add to them a tiny bit. So it's just all arrows are pointing, unfortunately, for everyone else in the county, I think, towards Carrick and Fina. Maybe I wouldn't call them an outsider, but if they were going to be a second bet, I'd probably go with Fina as a second bet. Yeah, I think Fianna all the Mohol, all the Mohol are about to kill me. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and withdraw from the county team for next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But it, like, it, like obviously, you have Burn there. If KB catches heat during the championship, you know, he's probably putting 11, 12, 13 points on the board, and they become tough to beat then as well. You know, so and they've been in the last three county finals. Like it's like they're not going to be far away. I think the great thing about the Leitrim County Championship is that it is so competitive. Like it really, it really is competitive. Like between Fe like Barry McNulty gives Manor Hamlet a chance. Like really, really does give them a chance in terms of you have James Rooney, you have Fran, or sorry, Connor Dolan, you have Paddy Maguire, um, and then all of a sudden you have a little bit of class now. All of a sudden within within their group with with Evan if he gets back from this wrist injury and Barry McNulty, and all of a sudden now they them boys have got a, they've they've got a chance now as well. Do you know? 
Yeah, absolutely. It's 91 years, I think, since FINA last won the, the FINA Cup. And I, I, I'm open to correction. I know Vincent O'Rourke will be on to me with a correction on this if I'm wrong. Yeah. But I feel like my mother's uncle was on that team. He was a, he won a college amateur medal with, with Leitrim uh, in 27 from FINA. And he'd be of the right vintage. And so uh, maybe there's a link there, but uh, it's been a while. He's long, long dead at this stage, Paddy Carey. Uh, Andy, it's been a pleasure to have you. I'm sure we'll be chatting to you along with pitches. We might even have you back. We had you for the county final last year. We might even have you back on commentary duty with us at some stage again this year. Uh, we'll, we'll firm that up. We'll, we'll talk. My people will talk to your people to negotiate yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the arrangements. Andy, thanks a million for, for chatting with me. It's been a pleasure and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks, Brefty. Talk soon. Thanks, lads. Andy Moore in there chatting to me earlier in the week. Uh, uh, very honest interview. Great uh, responses to that. Um, so the questions are posed to him. Some tough questions in there, given the, the way that the season has gone so far. Apologies to those of you that were here at the start of the show. My mic wasn't working. I hope it's working with you now. Do let me know in the comments if there's any problems. Uh, but we'll move on quickly. We'll take one to a quick look at the results and fixtures of the Football League before we do cross over to have a look inside the camp at the Leitrim Ladies under 16s. They, of course, have a big All Ireland semi final clash with Antrim uh, next weekend. So we'll be chatting to their manager, John Campbell, and a couple of players from around their squad uh, in just a few moments. But first of all, uh, maybe let's take a quick look at the Division One League tables. If we just bring them up here, uh, the results from last uh, week. And we take a quick look at the league table. Of course, St. Mary's continue their fine form with another victory uh, in their second or third round game in that competition. Uh, I'll just reset these again. That's uh, the results of the weekend. St. Mary, or these two weekends ago, Fina St. Collins 2.22, Leitrim Gales 3.7, Ryan O'Rourke with a big score in that, uh, like 12 points or 13 points um, in that particular game on his return to club football. Aha Willen 119, Glen Carr Manor 110, Up Nashilan 9 points, Ballon and Marshall and Hessens 418, and St. Mary's that one point victory over Mohull leaves the league table looking like it is on screen there. St. Mary's the only team with a 100% record so far in Division 2, and at off 113, Melvin Gales 2 8. Uh, Alan Gales 118, Drummer Hare 211, Balnagara 213, Carrigan 3 points, Ahavas 15 points. Um, Kiltobert 4-9 in the league table there. Balnaglera and Alan Gales out on top of that particular table at the moment. Melvin Gales struggling at the bottom of the table in Division 3. Drum Riley 18 points. Eslin 14 points. Sorry, just lost control over here. Uh, Gort Letcher 2-14. Borna Kula 8 points. Clean 2-11. Glenfarr and Kiltiklaher 8 points. And Gort Letcher sitting on top of that table. 6 points from their opening 3 victories. Drum Borna Kula, who they beat last weekend, uh, four, po four points, just two points behind Gort Letcher. Well, uh, the rest of the chase and pack, Drum Kieran, Clune, Eslin, and Drum Riley, all on two points. Glenfarn Kilty yet to get their season up and running. Of course, they are in action tonight. If we look at the fixtures, uh, we'll bring them up on the screen here. And um, tonight's fixtures in the Division Three of the All County Football League Eslin versus Clune, Glenfarn Kilty, Clare versus Gort Letcher. And Borna Kula versus Drum Kieran. They'll go into battle today. Uh, while in Division 2, we have a full round of fixtures there as well. So, Drummer Hare versus Anna Duff, Kiltubber versus Alan Gales, Melba Gales versus Balan Aglera, and Carrie Gallen and Alvas in a local derby complete the round two fixtures. One Division 1 game postponed, or at least moved to tomorrow afternoon, 1 p.m. throw in. That's between Balan Moore, down here at the bottom of your screen, it's Balan Moore, Sean Hessels versus Fina St. Collins. That takes place tomorrow at one o'clock. But the other three games, all at seven p.m. this evening. Leitrim Gales versus St Mary's, uh, a local derby at seven p.m. tonight. Muhl and Ah Willen uh, and Glencar Manor versus Ochnashilan. So those games all taking place uh, this evening or tomorrow. Plenty of action. We're not going to go in depth into those particular games. They've been well worked for over the last two weeks in terms of the results. And the fixture is all thrown in in the next 90 minutes or two hours or so. Uh, we wanted to give time to Andy on some today's show. But we did take a little visit last weekend, the weekend before maybe, we took a trip over to the training camp for the under-16 girls. They have a big All-Ireland semi-final against Antrim next weekend. Uh, first of all, let's hear from their manager, uh, John Campbell, ahead of that big fixture. Here's what he had to say to me at training last week manager of the Leitrim under 16s it's been a, an exciting first season for you in the job you looking forward to a, an all-ireland semi-final in just a couple of weeks against antrim 
Very much so. Um, it's been a reward for exactly how hard the girls have worked. It's a very, very easy man management's an easy job when you have a backing of a county board, which has been very good to us all year, and the players' commitments, and also my coaching staff. So yeah, it is. We are really, really working hard to prepare now for this game. Uh, I would say that it's a just reward for where we've gone. We've found the provincial a little bit, I wouldn't say daunting, but it's been um, a learning curve for us. But the structure is there for us to keep going ahead. And uh, I would be very confident when it's all Ireland sea final, um, because it's not something that a county like Leitrim gets every time. I know that we more or less automatically are guaranteed because of the small numbers in our county to get to an all Ireland, but at the same time, it's very prestigious. It, uh, it go, going forward for these girls, when they progress later on in their career, it's something that they can look back and say. In terms of the actual competition, uh, this squad, 30 players as you mentioned, but pulled from clubs all over the county. How, uh, how difficult was it to get these girls in? You mentioned a figure of 86 at training. It doesn't sound like it was that difficult at no, all. No, well at the same time, um, well, what's happening was that we started with a panel of 86 and within two weeks we had to whittle it down to 30. It's because of the time frame that we were appointed. We're about a month and a half, two months behind. But uh, you see, the lucky thing is with my coaching staff, I have I picked the coaching staff of uh, people who were aware, much more aware of uh, players' uh, qualities than I was. So it made it easier. So our couple of trials here, we had uh, coaching staff and parents from the individual clubs who were able to point out players. But at the same time, it was also a learning experience because girls who had never shone with their club, when it came to county then, they, they stepped up. So. It wasn't the, the difficult choice that I thought I would have because um, the quality of football within Leitrim, is, I think, is extremely high. In terms of the girls who've come in, uh, can you maybe tell us who's, who's impressed you without naming names individually, but um, who can we look out for in that game in a couple of weeks' time? I would say that there are, well, we, can't, we won't say names, but positions. Our full back is an extremely intelligent footballer and we've been doing a lot of work on her uh, for centre, centre or midfield, you will see a diamond there, one of, which I think in a year or two time will actually uh, be pushing at a very young age for senior status. We have players there who I think my, personally myself would walk onto any other, um, any other county team within this province is because I haven't seen as good as them. Of course, the intermediate side to start their uh, All Ireland Championship campaign this weekend as well. They're out against Kildare tomorrow in, in Abbott Money Park, Sean McDermott. Um, any of these girls we might see popping up in, in that team in the next couple of seasons? Without, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, that, which is why I think that I've really, really take, uh, really embraced this job, is because this is the age group that it has to start at. We can see when it goes from under 16, we're having 30, I'd have 30 consecutive every training session. They give every, every heart they have. And I think it's the most important age group because as uh, leaving certs go and colleges come, then we see them that they start to whittle on. So if we can get these some sort of success at under 16, progress to minor, and then I would give them four or five years, I would say 50% will make the nucleus of that team at the moment. They'll certainly push, be pushing some of them out, and these will be waiting in the wings. Excellent. Well, listen, the very, very best of luck to you and your charges in two weeks or three weeks' time against Antrim, and uh, the future looks bright for ladies' football in the county. Well, thank you to you, Breffney, as well, because I'm, I'm uh, actually humbled and delighted that you could take a morning off to do this, is because with the underage ladies' football, I think that it should be something of the future that we, especially going into an All Ireland final, I would ask all parents and uh, all. Um, players as much as possible to come out and support them. I'm sure they will. Thanks very much, John. Thanks, Rafi. John Campbell there chatting to me uh, two weeks ago ahead of the All-Ireland semi-final against Antrim in a week's time for the Leitrim ladies under 16s. But when we were out there, we decided we might as well get to know a little bit of the squad. So we did take a few of the players aside and ask them a few questions about themselves, each other, their teammates, and how the season is faring out for them so far. We're going to hear from four of the uh, team's members, Ava McCartan of St. Joseph's, Ola McQueenie from Mughal, Saoirse Davis of Kildra Gales, and St. Bridget's, Dervla Gunn. And here's uh, the questions and the answers we got when we spoke to the four girls uh, at training for the under-16 county team. I don't even know if I know. Oh, I think I did. Uh, um... 
I actually don't know. Oh, it's probably the same. Yeah, I think it's the same, but I don't even remember my own. I think it was Sligo, wasn't it? Sligo in Balnamore. In oh, yeah, 14, I think so, yeah. I think it was. I don't know what year that would have been, though. Like, three years ago? Oh, it was... You were under 14. So it was like... Yeah, but it was the under 14 development squad, I'd say. Like, in 2019. Yeah. Up in, like, Ballyhonas. <laughs> I'd say that's what it was. But... First time, like, an actual game, though, because that was... Yeah, that was development squad. I don't know, who you... You played... Oh, you played, like, Sligo or Longford first that year. Yeah, but um, we got shut down because of COVID then. Oh, yeah, because you, you didn't get to, like, the actual championship yeah. at all. <laughs> but, um... Yours was the under-14, uh, the under-16 game last year, was it? No, two years ago. Yeah, a year before it was under-14. Under yeah. I don't know who we were playing. <laughs> we didn't win it. <laughs> it was Fermanagh last year in a challenge game. Wait, does that count? <laughs> um, that was in, it was outside Enniskillen somewhere. I don't know where it oh, was. Yeah, sure we won well, though. <laughs> Fermanagh. <laughs> Rona, I don't know, then his two brothers. Yeah. I three. Then you have. You definitely have an older brother. No, younger brother. No, wait. You have a brother, right? His name's, <laughs> his name's Dara. Yeah. No? Okay, well, I can't think if he's older or younger. I'm going to go with older. Yeah. Okay, yeah, he's older. Is that it? Or do no, you... I, no, I have an older sister and a younger brother. Oh, is <laughs> oh okay, wait. John is one of the boys. Yeah. And then there's the other one, and I don't know his name. Um, Darren. Alwyn. And that's it, is it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you've five siblings? Yeah. Saoirse, Killian. Yeah. Um, oh God, I forget the other one. Um, yeah, okay. I think that's <laughs> yeah, as far that's as I'm going to get. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know my own. <laughs> Neither, I don't know who it is. I don't know. I don't even know my own. I don't even know my own one. You can't have a right or wrong answer. We're so bad at these. Um, I'll just say Harry Styles. <laughs> um, I'll just say The Weeknd. That's fine. <laughs> Harry Styles. Nile Horn. Yeah. Um, oh, God. I've no idea. Who is that? I don't really have one. <laughs> I'll just say Billy Eilish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I actually don't know. I don't really see that many people yeah. outside. Yeah. And Football. that's like... I think Lucy has nice outfits sometimes, yeah. like outfits. Yeah, that's actually true, Lucy. Lucy Murphy. Tara. Yeah, Tara. Tara, definitely yeah, Tara. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Probably me. Yeah. Seriously. Me? I'll just say that. <laughs> oh. Or sorry, Orla, maybe. Yeah, Orla McQueenie, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. She'd have the speaker anyway, yeah. so <laughs> she just hook it up. Um, Probably Orla. Yeah. <laughs> Just all one direction. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Probably Mohol or us. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe Mohol. Or maybe... I don't even know. Oh. I'd like to think us, but I'd say it might be. Bridges have a good team this year and so did Drummer Hare. So it'll be a tough competition anyways between the three or four in the division. I don't know. But my bet's on probably Bridges. Yeah. I, I would like to say us as well, but I might say... Maybe Manor or Kiltobert? Um, I scored a penalty in our final last week and we'd been practicing them the week before, so that was kind of good. Ava. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> uh, I think probably, oh, sugar, sorry. <laughs> I think probably just like, <laughs> just like the bond between all the girls, you know, we've, been really good friends over the last year compared to recent years and I think it's just nice to see yeah same with me like when when somebody else does something good and we're all a team we're all happy for each other but even I blocked the ball because I'm really bad at blocking balls and I actually did so <laughs> probably playing ladies football at like a young age and just getting to bond with the older girls in the club but yeah winning finals it's a good feel <laughs> You know, we have new management and everything, so make them proud as well. And what they're doing with us. Yeah. I'd like to win on the 5th of July. Yeah. <laughs> For us, like, as a team to get, like, closer and stuff as well. Because yeah. we started later than everyone, and then, like, 
I feel like we're a bit behind. And like we do have like a big enough age gap. Like there's girls in like second year and stuff, a lot of girls in second year and there's a lot of girls in like fifth and TY. Yeah. So like to get closer, because it is kind of hard when there's a big age yeah. gap like that. Probably Lucy. Yeah, Lucy. She's Ava. very strong on her left foot side as well. And Ava like does so much for midfield. Like she's yeah. always running and stuff. She's been out and out midfielder. Yeah. She's running up and down, very noticeable. Oh, it would mean a lot, and especially with Leitrim ladies losing out to Antrim not too long ago. I think it's very important for us to try and show them that we're not just a small Leitrim team and that we can win. Yeah, I think that's the same for me. Um, our line out is different from when we started and we've all learned a lot about each other and we've learned how to play together and it'd be good to show that. Yeah. Ah, yeah. It'd be good. And I think it's like we do have a chance of winning it and we all think yeah. that we like will win it and stuff so if we think that way we should if hopefully. we have a month now no games we put in the work i think we can really yeah. do something they just the atmosphere is a bit different not in a bad way but it's just like we're all the same age as of where it's clubber yeah. with like the ladies team and stuff and they're a lot older yeah like. we're like the oldest ones of this age group now so. yeah so you feel a bit, like i feel a bit more comfortable here as well yeah. because i don't like you can't really be like the boss at like senior yeah. and stuff we but like here it's like we're all kind of like the boss or whatever, and they've so. known each other yeah we've been playing for a while yeah um yeah well i think it'd be good if we have like a good positive attitude and stuff i think we will do good if we put it up to them at least you know give a good fight Should. it'd be nice to win yeah I think if we do put in our work for yeah. the month, though, I, I think we, we can could as well. I definitely think we can. It'd be very big. Like for so us many as well. of those like Connacht kind of games, we could have won. Yeah. Like, so hopefully, do ourselves some justice anyway. Yeah. Uh, it's four girls there giving their thoughts on each other and of course that all important all ireland semi-final next week the very best of luck to them in that uh, that's it for the, this week the best of luck to all teams taking part in games this evening of course uh, all well nearly all 22 of our 23 clubs in action tonight uh in the mace night all county football league division one two and three we'll be back with full-time uh synopsis of those games on the website on finalwhistle.ie over the course of the night players statistics all of the usual stuff will be updated as normal uh by our team of reporters around the grounds for those of you that listen to us for the last uh, hour or so thank you very much for joining us we'll be back next week with another podcast talk to you then